students i want to just tell briefly about uh, the brain stem uh, before going into the uh, examination of the cranial nerves okay uh, these are some terms uh, and some nuclei and some tracts which you, have, will, you will come across in the future CNS our discussion. Even this tectum, tegmentum and base, these words you will be reading from Chanatani Chaurasya, but you will be little get confused what are these terms. So I want to just make it a little simple. What are this tectum, tegmentum and base means? So here students this is midbrain, this is pons and this is medulla. This is the posterior part, this is the anterior part. See posteriorly, this is a tectum from here, tectum, tectum, and this is a tegmentum, the middle part is the tegmentum, and this is a basis, the base in the pond, basis, pontis, this base. Okay, this is a tectum, tegmentum, and base. Then what is the brainstem nuclei? This is very important brainstem nuclei. Okay. So here you should know rule of four. The rule of four is very important to understand anatomy of the brainstem. The four nuclei brainstem nuclei are above the level of pons, four nuclei within the pons and four cranial nuclei below the pons. Which are the four cranial nuclei above the level of pons? The first nerve olfactory, second optic nerve, the third and fourth oculomotor and trochlear are above the level of pons. The four nuclei, other four nuclei, the next four, four the fifth, sixth abducent, fifth is trigeminal, seventh is facial, eighth is vestibular cochlear. These four nuclei are in the pons. The next four nuclei, the ninth, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth, glossopharyngeal, vagus, accessory, and hypoglossal. These are in the medulla. Just I want to show the anatomy of the brainstem nuclei. See, first and second, olfactory and optic, not shown here. See, a third cranial nuclei has adding the vestibular nuclei, which is a parasympathetic here. And this is the third cranial nuclei, okay. And this is the fourth cranial nuclei, trochlear, third, fourth, okay. So, these are all in midbrain. First, second, third and fourth are in midbrain. This is the above the level of pons. Next, coming to the pons, the next, after the fourth, fifth. See, here is the fifth cranial nuclei, the motor nuclei, it has both motor and sensory nuclei. Okay, the sensory nuclei, see your mesencephalic nucleus of the fifth nerve, then the principal sensory nucleus of the fifth nerve, this is the principal sensory nucleus, principal sensory nucleus here, see my arrow in the mouse, this is the principal sensory nucleus of the fifth nerve and this is the descending nucleus of the fifth nerve which extends till the spinal cord, okay. The first four are above the level of pons. This is the fifth one. This is sixth cranial nuclei, abducent, sixth cranial nuclei that is abducent in the pons. Okay. Then see here the seventh cranial nuclei, seventh cranial nuclei. See here the seventh cranial nerve nuclei. And this is the eighth cranial nuclei, superior, inferior, medial, and lateral. These four cranial nuclei are in the pons, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. Now next come to the medulla, see here nucleus of the solitary tract, it contains sensation to the posterior one third of the tongue by glossopharyngeal nerve, okay. So this is the one ninth cranial nuclei along with the cauda tympana which supplies the sensation, special sensation to the tongue, okay. So this is the nucleus of the solitary tract, ninth cranial nerve. Then you have dorsal motor nucleus of the 10th here, dorsal motor nucleus of the 10th, okay. Then 11th cranial nuclei here, the spinal nucleus of the accessory, spinal nucleus of the spinal accessory cranial nerve. And then you have 12th cranial nuclei here, 12th cranial nuclei, 12th, see here 12th. So the 9th, 10th, 11th and 12th are in the brain stem, brain stem huh? and here you can see one more nucleus, nucleus ambiguous, nucleus ambiguous, these are the nucleus which supply, now supply to the muscles of pharynx, okay, muscles of pharynx, so it is a combination of 9th, 10th and cranial part of accessory, 9th, 10th and cranial part of accessory, this nucleus ambiguous, okay students, so 
4 above the level of pawns, 4 within the pawns, 4 in the medulla. This is the brainstem nuclei. So, whenever we discuss the cranial nerves in future, anatomy from where it originates is very important. Okay. Right. Then one more rule of 4 in brainstem anatomy is there are four structures which are medial in the brainstem and four structures which are lateral. Which are the four structures which are medial? See, you have a posterior column, medial lemniscus, which carries a fine touch vibration sensation. You have a corticospinal tract, which is medially situated. Okay, corticospinal tract, the medial lemniscus. The medial longitudinal fasciculus, okay, it is medially situated. And then you have motor nucleus of the cranial nerves, which are medially situated. So, 4M. Medial lemniscus, motor corticospinal tract pathway, medial longitudinal fasciculus, and motor nucleus of the cranial nerves. There are four lateral tracts by S, 4S, okay? Which are the 4S? The spinocerebellar tract, sympathetic chain, lateral spinothalamic tract, spinal nucleus of the trigeminal nerve. So, which are the 4S? Spinocerebellar tract, sympathetic chain, spinothalamic tract, spinal nucleus of the fifth nerve. These are the four S which are laterally situated. Students, this anatomical information is very important when we follow the CNS discussion further on. So, some which are the major ascending and descending tracts in the brainstem. I just want to summarize this for you. So, here, students, you can see. Uh, this is a spinothalamic tract. Usually, it synapses here. So, dorsal, dorsal ganglia will carry the impulse. It will synapse here and then it will, it will cross to the opposite side and then it will ascend as lateral spinothalamic tract here. You can see lateral spinothalamic tract and then it synapses in the thalamus. Okay, this lateral spinothalamic tract, students. Then, this is the posterior column. Posterior column, nucleus gracilis and cuneatus, ascends here, cross to the opposite side in the medulla. Okay, then medial lemniscus, it ascends as a medial lemniscus here and then it goes and synapse in the thalamus. Okay. Next, these, these are the two main ascending tracts. The descending tract from the motor cortex, when the area number 4, bed cell, see the corticospinal tract will come down and then it cross in the lower part of medulla, synapse in the anterior cell and it supplies the muscles. From the motor cortex, there are other fibers also apart from corticospinal tract which will come and decussate and will and will innervate the opposite cranial nuclei. See 1, 2, 3, 4, all the cranial nuclei has connection from the opposite side of the motor, motor cortex. This corticobulbar tract, corticobulbar tract. And you have cranial nerve 6 nucleus and it has a connection with the opposite, this is a connection with the opposite thermal nucleus that is MLF. So, medial longitudinal fasciculus connects the third cranial nerve nucleus of one side with the cranial nerve nucleus of the sixth side of the opposite side that is MLF, medial longitudinal fasciculus. Then lastly, our red nucleus supplies the fibers to the spinal cord that is rubrospinal. So, rubrospinal tract, rubrospinal tract and then red nucleus has connection to the inferior olivary nucleus, central tegmental tract, central tegmental, tegmental tract. So, spinothalamic and medial lemniscus are the ascending tract, corticospinal tract and corticobulbar tract are the descending tract, MLF connects sixth nucleus to the third nucleus of the opposite side, there are corticobulbar tract which connects to the cranial nuclei in the brain stem and medial longitudinal fasciculus which connect the sixth cranial nuclei on one side with the third cranial nuclei on the other side. So, students remember these tracts throughout your discussion of the CNAs in future. Then one more interesting thing, whenever there is um, a lesion in the foramen magnum or the medulla, there is something called as a cruciate paralysis. What is this cruciate paralysis? See here in the low part of the medulla, these are the arm fibers, they decussate at a higher level to the opposite side, corticospinal tract, they are decussating at a higher level here. Okay. But the leg fibers you see, they are decussating at a lower level. The leg fibers are decussating at a lower level. So, suppose if there is a lesion occurs here, at this point, the arm fibers are already decussated. So, ipsilateral arm weakness will be there. 
whereas the these leg fibers will cross later so contralateral leg weakness will be there so a lesion here will produce ipsilateral arm weakness and contralateral leg weakness contralateral leg weakness this is known as cruciate paralysis or hemiplegia alternance or crossed hemiplegia this you get in foramen magnum lesions either due to compression or due to a multiple sclerotic plague demyelinating plague okay this is about briefly about brainstem before discussing about the examination of cranial nerves